Palmalucky is building one of the most important tech companies in the world and is also simultaneously one of the most influential and entertaining people in tech. I've got two banger clips for you to enjoy from him today. So I'd love for you to just maybe walk through one or two of your favorite things here. Sure. So this is our public showroom. We have another one that's full of stuff that I can't show to anybody without permission from the government. But of the things that are in this showroom, one of the things we're most proud of lately is Fury, okay. uh, also known as the FQ-44. Uh, this is the first autonomous fighter that the United States Air Force has ever procured. We recently just flew it for the first time. We went from signing a contract with the Air Force to first flight in 556 days, which is, as far as I know, the fastest new fighter development program since the end of the Korean War. Uh, the really exciting thing about this program is we are competing against a lot of the big guys. So we are competing against Boeing, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, and in the end, Andrew beat all of them, which was really, uh, really gratifying to hmm. you know, go from starting this company to going toe to toe with the guys who are legends of the fighter community and actually get selected to build something, build, build, build something to fly. So it's an AI powered fighter jet that flies alongside manned fighters. So imagine if I had an F-35 pilot, he might fly with two or three or four or five of these alongside with him, extending his weapons webs forward, his sensors forward, and allowing them to engage in risks that you would never want a person to do. You know, there's a lot of ways to win a fight and live to see another day. There's a lot of ways to win a fight and sacrifice pawns on the board. And autonomy means that you can do that without the ethical problems of, you know, just throwing away human lives. And what do you think this costs you compared to what the government it would cost them? <laughs> um, I think that we're in general much more efficient than the government. <laughs> We've done a pretty good job. You know, up, we, we like to think of our of our approach as being a defense product company, not a defense contractor. Mm. Uh, that is, we're not getting paid to engage in contracted work where they say, go and do you know this many hours of work to build exactly this thing. Instead, we're investing our own money in building what we think the right products are, and then we sell them to the government. So we wanna be going to the government generally with a product rather than a PowerPoint, or at least a prototype instead of a presentation. And that's gone really, really well for us. It leads to way better incentive structures. We make more money when we move faster rather than more money when we move more slowly. We make more money when things work the first time rather than more money when it takes 10 tries. And you can imagine which of those leads to better outcomes. How far do you think we are from invisibility cloaks and masking? And I don't mean by radar. And sure. That you mean like visi physically, visible like spectrum? Visible? Yes. Yeah. That's actually a lot easier. You think um, so? Oh yeah, way easier. Really? I, it's it's a lot harder to hide from synthetic systems. So if you're talking about like radars or lidars or it, it, there's a large number of ways that you can see the world that are not just visible spectrum imaging. Mm. People are actually relatively easy to fix. You know, Andrew has a project going way back, building optical camouflage for the Ghost helicopter drone that we make, and it's essentially a projection system that looks at the target, looks behind. Uh, it looks at where the target is, knows where you are, looks behind you, and it calculates the luminance and color values that you would need to match whatever is between your target you're surveilling and the background. So that might be the sky, that might be a mountain, it might be a cloud. It's not that hard and our eyes don't have very good resolution. You know, Ghost has a very narrow mm -hmm. frontal cross section. And so it was actually designed partly to make itself very workable with optical camouflage. So building drones that are invisible to the human eye at the ranges that you're using them. It's not just like a hypothetical. Andrew did this in like 2019, 2020. You know, actually, let me see if I can find, let me see if I can find something for you. I, I, might, I might have a picture I can pull up of some of those tests. An invisible. Yeah, invisible drone. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We're looking for an invisible drone right now. So what we did is down here at the end, we had our drone with the system turned on and off. So this is a ghost drone, just the body of it, like, yeah. you know, not with, uh, without, without, without the, the landing gear attached. And we put it up on this tripod and we we're testing it against the, dr uh, the truck and then also the sky because they're very, very different systems. So we we're moving up and down to view, you know, to make it change color as the observer moved. But uh, this is with optical camouflage disabled. See how you can clearly see yeah. the body as the sky. Mm -hmm. That's see crazy. how you can see this ever so slight disturbance yeah and see how it's perfect <laughs> and it lines up and it, we, we, it can't the goal wasn't and by the way you'll see how the body is also copying the truck as well right. so in this case it was turned off 
then we turn it on. So it has to have part of itself be the sky, part of it be the truck. It's a very, very difficult, high contrast problem to do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. If you're all in the air, it's even easier. The point is, visible spectrum optical camouflage is actually quite easy. But something like this would be trivially easily seen by, uh, you know, an infrared camera, a thermal camera, lay, you know, LIDAR, radar. So the biggest problem with optical camouflage, and the main reason you don't see a lot of money being put towards it in the modern defense space is it's not actually that useful. It's useful against human adversaries who do not have any other technology to aid them. And those are not really the enemies the United States is focused on stopping these days. So like, for example, you might notice Ghost doesn't come with optical camouflage. All of our customers have been briefed on this. They've seen this. Their point is, Palmer, I'm not going up against a bunch of guys, you know, who are walking around with their naked eyes and nothing else. These are people who are, like, we are concerned about adversaries like Russia and China and Iran that are armed with very, very high levels of technology. And they're, they, if anything, the optical opt camouflage in some ways actually makes you easier to spot. We'll get back to a second clip of Palmer in just a few moments, but his second baby, Andrew, is succeeding because it operates differently from giants like Lockheed Martin or Boeing. Palmer calls Andrew a defense product company, not a defense contractor. This means they build working technology first with their own money, rather than waiting for government handouts to start work. In this clip, Palmer explains that traditional contractors get paid to do hours of work, which means they often get paid more if a project takes longer. In contrast, Andrew uses his own cash to build their product first, like the Fury Autonomous Fighter Jet, which went from a contract to its first flight in just 556 days. Palmer clearly states, we make more money when we move faster and when things work the first time. To understand why this is a revolution, you have to look at how the government usually buys weapons. For the last 40 years, the industry ran on cost plus contracts. This means the government pays the company for all their costs plus a guaranteed profit on top. Sounds crazy, but this system actually rewards being slow. If a project is delayed or goes over budget, the company gets paid for more hours. It's like hiring a plumber who gets paid by the hour. He has no reason to fix your sink quickly. Andrew flips this by acting like a Silicon Valley tech company. They take the financial risk. They build the Roadrunner or the Fury Jet to their products with their own capital. And then they say to the Pentagon, here is a working jet buy it off the shelf. This forces Andrew to be efficient because if the product fails, Andrew loses money, not the taxpayer. And by being AI first and product focused, they are exposing just how slow the traditional system has become. Andrew are selling finished solutions to the government. This also allows for software to find warfare. Old tanks and planes are extremely hard to upgrade. Andrew's weapons run on a operating system called Lattice. Just like your phone gets an update to fix bugs or add features, Andrew can update their weapons over the air. This makes the military faster, cheaper, and more adaptable than ever.